Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today I have a little pickups video for you guys and it includes a wrestling figure and loads of Disney Racerverse diecast cars. Now I actually picked these up ages ago and they just happen to have been sat in this bag ever since. But since the non-trading card videos are sort of thin on the ground since I've started running the business, I thought we'd do a video on this anyway. I made that decision weeks ago and now the bag is just sitting around with me having found a new storage solution for my Hot Wheels and all these cars are just sat in this bag. One thing that doesn't help with the disaster rides videos, which I'm still yet to start, which is my Hot Wheels opening videos, is uh, what to what to use, what to do it on. Because I don't know whether you guys might have even noticed it already, but the graininess on these rubber mats, I mean, apart from the fact that it just shows up all these white marks, but the graininess on the camera can be very weird. It kind of kind of moves a bit you know this is the underside of a match tax play mat and i always wanted for this kind of thing i always wanted to get one of those car rugs and to just be able to drape that over something because this table is really not the, the the best quality thing to be staring at for however long and i really wanted to get one of those car rugs you know the classic car rugs that we all grew up with and loved but um Getting a decent quality one of them is really expensive nowadays. Like, they just make really rubbish ones. Like, they'd make really rubbish versions of most things nowadays and charge a fortune for those two. And I actually did have the classic IKEA one when I was a kid, but uh, it had a slight rip in the bottom. My parents think we threw that away years ago. So it's probably not in the loft, but we're going to find out. So anyway, my solution to that problem in this video is that I'm just going to use the match attacks uh, thing. So yeah, first of all, we'll start off with the main thing. This was a WWE figure, which is the main focus of the channel, really, or at least it's supposed to be. That I happened to pick up in B&M, and it is the Elite 93 Ricky Steamboat. This was a really cool pickup. Wow, this this doesn't work, does it? Like, this... That that just look there's no good way for me to show this on the table, man. The the series ninety three elites have been around in B and M since uh well they've been there for a few months, but most of the figures with them being twenty pounds as well, like full price, there's there's not a whole lot of interest there for me, but I I saw this guy of which, you know, this is the first I've ever seen and I, I really don't think it's common for, for Steamboat to appear. And to be honest, I thought we'd just pick it up. We got the WCW TV Championship there. It's a really nice belt. The figure itself I don't particularly need. I'm not huge on the head scan. I kind of prefer the Steamboat I already have. But that is single jointed elbows. And it is a nice attire as well. So I might just, you know, Frankenstein the two. But even at the time, if I literally just bought it and sold it, I could have... I bought it for £20. I could have sold it for 30 35 right then and there. So, yeah... I thought it was worth picking up. And after that, we have the Disney Racerverse cars. Now, this is back from when B&M reduced them to £4. Or was it £3? Yeah, £3. B&M reduced these to £3. And considering they were 8 at retail, it was uh, incredible news. So that was the reason I was out in B&M when I came across the Ricky Steamboat. He was just an exciting hat on a hat. But for £3, I thought... My sister's already started off my collection. She got me Captain Hook and Grogu for my birthday last year. So I thought, you know what? This is going to be a thing. Disney content's pretty good. I want to get into more diecast racing avenues as well. Or, or you know, do it in general. So, yeah. B&M said we're clearing these for £3. And I said, you know what? I'm happy to clear you out. So, these are the cars that I got as a sort of clear-up job. As, you know, the ones that weren't there when my sister went in, told me that they were £3, and then bought me a copy of everything they had. So, first of all, we have Chewbacca. This is one that I really liked from Wave 1, but it's a good example of where, you know, the face and everything, I just don't know if I really think it reflects the character all that well. But the Millennium Falcon looks really, really cool, especially with the blue wheels. So that's the first one we picked up there. Next up, we got Mr. Incredible. This was one of my biggest ones from Wave 2, and they did have one of these when my sister went in. But uh, she pocketed it for my nephew, and I can't really argue with that. This is a really, really nice one. This one really does reflect Mr. Incredible really well. The car looks really good as well. It's this the Incredimobile, I think, or something like that. Yeah, really, really cool. Really, really like that one. So they were the two I picked up with the Ricky Steamboat. So now we get into the bag of the bits that my sister got me in the first place to start the whole thing off. So first of all, we have Iron Man. Ironically, despite there being characters I don't particularly care for in this, this is the one I kind of regret. 
because he's getting a two pack made with Hulk and I'm sure they'll release Hulk as a single as well at some stage. But, you know, right now it's kind of like, right, didn't need to rush to get Iron Man, especially since this seems to be the only one that is actually still available and shops the only one that there was so many of that they couldn't get rid of them all. Again, really good likeness of the Iron Man helmet. I'm not too sure what the car is supposed to be there. I'm sure if we look it up on the wiki, we'll find out very quickly. But yeah, nice gold and red wheels as well. Really cool. We got Princess Leia, which I really like this one as well. She's uh, she's driving Tanti 4. I actually don't think this is a bad likeness. I think for a, a cartoony version of Leia, I think that's, you know, pretty good. It's almost like a type of phobia thing there on the back, isn't it? Like there's so many holes. But yeah, really, really nice one. I was really excited about this. This was one of the first news that uh, Wave 2 was coming out that I just happened across the uh, Princess Leia one on Google one day. We got Darth Vader as well from Wave 1. Again, not a huge fan. I think the mouth slash nose piece is a bit too big. But other than that, you know, side on, that's brilliant. The helmet's dead on, the red eyes, really nice. The, uh, the TIE Fighter wings is really cool. Okay, so the one I probably care about the least is uh, May. May Lin from Turning Red. But I thought, you know what, we're getting all the others, we might as well. I think this is a great example of May Lin. Like, I think that the Turning Red art style actually lends itself to the Raceverse art style really, really well. But the fact that she's driving the Red Panda version of her mam, I don't know. I just find that a bit weird. I mean, if she was just driving a red panda, then fair enough. If she, she's driving the red panda version of herself, also fair enough. The fact she's driving a mom, I don't know. What, I don't know. I just, I just think, I just, I just think it's a bit weird. But I don't know. Maybe it makes perfect sense. I don't know. I'll get over it. We also have Ahsoka from Star Wars. Again, not a character I hugely care for, but you know, if we're picking them all up, we might as well pick her up too. This one's really nice as a model. To be fair, the head's not bad at all. I think it's pretty good for one of the Star Wars ones. I ended up actually getting another one of these a few weeks ago for my girlfriend because she kept asking for this one. <laughs> and finally, ending strong, we got Luke Skywalker. That could be anyone. That could be Wedge Antilles. That could be any rebel. There is no kind of discernible <laughs> Luke Skywalker quality to that. But the uh, the X-Wing car model is really, really cool. And the, the rebel helmet is really cool. There's a lot of detail and stuff going on in there. I, the car molds are really cool. Like some of them are, are a bit lazy, but some of them like there's just there's just a lot of detail in there as well, and that's really really cool. So the only ones that I am missing that I want are Mike Wazowski, Buzz Lightyear, and Jack Skellington. All of which, ironically, are some of my absolute favorites of these models. And I should have bought Jack Skellington when Wave Two first came out. I should have known it was going to be hard to find. And it seems like it's the most scarce one online as well. Not that I want to pay above retail price for these things. And with me owning a shop, I actually can order Raceverse in, but you don't know which wave you're getting. So, you know, I could just end up with... I mean, if we got Wave 2, we'd have the Jack Skellington sorted. If we got Wave 1, we'd have the Buzz and the Mike Wazowski sorted. So maybe it's worth doing. But right now, I'm still selling off the Lightning McQueen's from the uh, wintertime races bundle I got in a few weeks ago where I did, you know, basically the same thing. So maybe that'll be something I do, but I don't know. I just don't know what the demand is for people picking these up online for like above retail price kind of thing. So that is all the Raceverse cars that I picked up for £3. As I say, we do have Captain Hook and Grogu as well. And you can see those in a different video on the Disaster Garage playlist in the end screen. And I do hope to do some racing videos with these in the near future. But getting the news that these were three pound in B and M led me to a Google search, which what was what led me to to find out that not only are there like DC ones of these out now as well, and I mean there already was some Jurassic World ones, but I wasn't really interested in that anyway. But not only does that widen the amount of stuff, but p considering this is an a, a premium diecast car collection. I really didn't want to go crazy into this. I was kind of happy picking these up because I thought it was going to be a limited thing. And now DC's a thing. And if you look up the list of releases planned for Razorverse, it is crazy. There are some crazy crossovers turning up. There's like Scooby-Doo. There's like Back to the Future, which is not something I particularly care for. But, you know, it goes to show the kind of range that they're throwing out. And obviously we have all this DC stuff coming as well. 
So, yeah, I kind of like heavy invested in loads of the models I didn't have and then found out that the Raceiverse thing is actually going to be a Raceiverse now. It's not just going to be Disney and, you know, the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World models. But yeah, that's everything for this video. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you thought and check out the Disaster Garage playlist in the end screen for more. And hopefully there will be some more content for you guys coming soon, including races with these cars, openings with these cars, all that kind of stuff. And more of these cars when we start getting the DC figures and stuff. Although I do hate that this has ended up becoming like a, a real proper collection rather than some stuff I own to do daft races to get like Disney fans to watch my videos. But I digress. I really do appreciate you guys joining me. So thank you all for watching and goodbye.